Thanks for the introduction. And hi, everyone. Welcome to this talk, which is about self-testing, of course. Uh, and uh, uh, actually, today, our goal is not to uh, provide more examples of self-testing, which uh, we already have a lot of them. But rather, today, we are to uh, provide a more careful examination of the mathematical foundation of existing self-testing results, and hopefully, to lift or re to remove common assumptions made in self-tests. OK, so for the next 20 or 25 minutes, I'm going to start with some background knowledge about non games and self-testing, and then our motivation. Uh, what are the common assumptions in the self-testing literature? And what are the subtleties in the definition of self-testing? And what do we mean by the limits of self-testing and why we are curious about it? And then I'm going to present our um, answer or partial answer at least to all those questions. And in addition, I'm going to present a very interesting example that we found in the quantum set of correlation uh, whose existence is not known before. Okay, let's get started. So um, the non local game happens in the very typical bipartite uh, Bell scenario where we have two players, Alice and Bob, who interact classically with the a referee from a finite question set and a finite answer set. And the players during the game are not allowed to communicate between each other, uh, so there's a war between them. Uh, but nevertheless, they could share the entanglements, uh, potentially entangled, uh, entangled state, uh, but before the game starts and during the game, they can perform local measurement on their shared part of the state and provide answer corresponding. So uh, as a game, it consists of two parts, uh, which is the uh, verification function who determines whether the players win or lose the game. If the players win, it just spit out one. If not, it's just spit out zero. And also there's this uh, probability distribution that the referee used to sample his question to the players. Uh, in most cases, this is just uh, the uh, even distribution. Okay, and on the player's side, since they are not allowed to communicate, what uh, uh, their behavior is fully characterized by what we call the player's strategy, which is just the, the tuple of the state they share and the local measurement they perform by Alice and Bob. Okay, so uh, in this scenario, it is straightforward or rather trivial to induce the game value from the strategy uh, by this uh, very straightforward formula. But in the self-testing, we kind of want to do the inverse process. We want to induce the underlying quantum strategy merely from this uh, game value that could be observed by the referee. So uh, in other words, we can say that this strategy S is the unique strategy that can produce this uh, game value. And here we only consider optimal or maximum uh, game value because if the game value is not optimal, we can always uh, take a better strategy and a worse strategy and take the combination of them which uh, make it possible uh, for the strategy to be unique. Okay, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, since its birth, uh, self-testing has found a wide range of applications uh, in uh, various fields. For example, if you are at the tutorial by Professor Annie uh, on Sunday, uh, you should already know that it uh, can be used, for example, in this delegated quantum computation. And other examples include uh, applications in the device independent uh, cryptography and uh, complexity theory. Sometimes people even argue that its uh, successful application has outpaced a uh, uh, rigorous uh, examination of the underlying mathematical formulas. For example, if you look at uh, all those literatures about self-testing, what is often the case is that people usually make certain assumptions about the strategy employed by Alice and Bob. That's to say, uh, in the self-testing, what we want uh, is that S is the unique optimal strategy, but what we really prove in most cases is that this S is unique only among certain strategies. For example, sometimes we assume the state shared by Alice and Bob is pure, or we can sometimes assume that the state shared by Alice and Bob is, has full rank, meaning that the marginal states occupies the whole Hilbert space. Or sometimes we assume that uh, the measurement employed by Alice and Bob are projective. 
uh, yes, so these are the common assumptions uh, that has been made in the literature. And to put the idea more formally, uh, let's take this T to be the subset of the all possible uh, assumption that could be made uh, for this uh, employed strategy. And then T uh, could be any subset of that, meaning that we make certain assumptions uh, from it. So in this case, to separate from standard self-testing, we call it a T self-test if those uh, assumptions in T has been made uh, for the uh, uniqueness of the strategy. Okay, and clearly, uh, making assumptions, meaning that we are looking at not all possible strategies, but only certain strategies or a proper subset of all strategies. So it really weakens the self-testing statement from a pure mathematical point of view. And, um, and actually, these uh, assumptions could really potentially uh, go wrong in some of the cases. Here, uh, we have a, a rather naive uh, example where we have perfectly correlated strategies, uh, in which case uh, Alice and Bob are given only one question, but on that question, they have to answer, always answer the same, uh, always give the same answer. So here in this case, if we assume purity between the states shared by Alice and Bob, then it will lead to a conclusion that the statement must be entangled, because otherwise it's a separate, it's, sorry, it's a product state, it has to be a product state, then there's no way Alice and Bob's answer could be uh, correlated. And, uh, but on the other hand, the correlation itself is a classical correlation because it only has one question. So in principle, this correlation could be achieved even by a mixed but separate, separated state. So here, this purity assumption really leads to an incorrect conclusion. A more practical example in a device-independent random number generator uh, could be that uh, yes. So in, in the in the independent number ran, uh, sorry in the device-independent random number generator, uh, we would like this uh, random number to be unpredictable by any third party. But uh, because of a similar argument as what we use in the first example, if we assume already the purity between Alice and Bob, then there's no third party can be entangled with this pure state. So in other words, this random number is already uh, unpredictable. So in this case, this purity assumption really oversimplifies the security analysis, which is also not something we want. Uh, finally, uh, this is just a conceptual argument. So these assumptions really goes against the philosophy of self-testing, which always claims itself as making minimal assumptions. So this is basically why we think it's, it's, in, it's um, worth uh, rigorous treatment to, uh, to these uh, assumptions made in the literature. Okay. Another subtlety that we found, or another unclearness we found uh, about self-testing is about its uh, variance of its definitions. So um, in self-testing, we want this S to be the unique optimal strategy, but uh, of course there's uh, several uh, somehow trivial action that you can do to your strategy, which doesn't change its uh, game value. For example, uh, if you give Alice and Bob more entangled state, but they just never measure it, or if Alice and Bob just change their local basis, or in uh, physical language, just change uh, their frame of reference, or you just embed your same strategy into a bigger hero space, of course, all of them will not affect its game value. And it is sort of like the uh, uh, equivalence relation between the strategies that we want to question out when we talk about uh, uniqueness. So to cover all these uh, equivalence, people have uh, invented uh, several form of uh, uh, definition or, or several form of uh, equivalence. Uh, if you are working exactly in self-testing, you must be very familiar with those things, but if you're not, uh, it doesn't matter. The important thing is that different people do use uh, different definitions or different, or at least the different forms. And of course, um, we are not the first who are unhappy with that. There are already attempts uh, 
trying to bring up a more unified or more uh, operational uh, definition of uh, self-testing. But nevertheless, these three, we believe, are the most used in the literature. And even though it seems that they convey the same idea, it's still worth asking, are they really equivalent from a mathematical point of view? Okay. And finally, uh, what do we mean by the limit of self-testing? We really mean that uh, we want to understand what strategies can or cannot be self-tested. And the question for the state is rather complete because on the one hand, we know that all mixed states cannot be self-tested. On the other hand, we have already know how to self-test any bipartite pure states. So this somehow completes the question because we have no the answer for all the cases. But the question for the measurement is uh, rather incomplete. For example, we know all pure, sorry, all real projective measurement can be self-tested, but uh, we still don't know what's the limit of it. Is it the best we can do, or can we prove, sorry, can we or cannot we uh, self-test, uh, for example, non-projective, like real POVMs? Uh, yes, so uh, this is what we mean by limit of self-testing and we are uh, curious about it. Okay, uh, so in this work to put all these uh, concepts of self-testing in the more rigorous uh, mathematical footing, we first show that all these uh, existing self-testing that I listed before are equivalent in certain natural settings, which is good, which means we don't need to worry too much about it. And the second, which is also the most interesting part of the work, I believe, is that we identify which combination of assumptions can or cannot be lifted. Uh, yes. And second, uh, th thirdly, uh, we establish which uh, strategies cannot be self-tested in a assumption free manner. And finally, uh, we're gonna provide a very interesting correlation from the quantum set of correlation, which uh, admits uh, no full rank PVM realization. Uh, I'll get to more detail later, but uh, uh, the most, the, the important thing is that uh, this is, its existence is not known before, and it also has an uh, important implication in our result. Okay, so uh, let's first get to the unifying definition part of our result. So recall that we have these three uh, form of uh, definitions for self-testing, and our first main result is that uh, the first two, the, the matrix form definition and the purification definition are equivalent. And if we only consider full rank strategies, two of both of them are equivalent to the, to the third one, the, the extraction form, what we call it. Uh, yes, because uh, Full rank needs, the, the full rank case is the only case that uh, makes sense for the for for the for the third case, right? Because uh, uh, yes, in third case we we kind of uh, specify the measurement operator completely, and which uh, makes no sense if the strategy is not full rank because we uh, couldn't see anything happens outside of the support of the state. Yes, so, uh, so this is uh, is just a. Uh, is the, the answer is just a yes, uh, simple and clear. And uh, about lifting assumptions, uh, let's yes, just recall that we take T to be the subset of the uh, all these uh, assumptions that we could make about our employed strategy, and we say a game is a T self-test if, uh, if those T assumptions were made. And clearly, this uh, inclusion of this subset gives us a hierarchy of the self-testing statement. For example, if T is a subset of T prime, then uh, T self-test uh, means that uh, we make less assumptions than T prime self-test, which makes it a stronger statement than T prime self-test. And in this sense, to remove assumptions uh, really means that to promote self-testing statement from a weaker form to a stronger form. And finally, if uh, T equals the noun set, which means no assumptions has been made, then we just call it an assumption-free self-test. Okay, and uh, here it goes, our main theorem, which consists of uh, two parts. First, uh, all of those results based on the very important fact that 
this as the, the strategy that we want to self-test is good itself, meaning that it is uh, pure, full rank, and PVM. It has all the nice property that we want. And okay, so, uh, given this fact, uh, in part A, we show that if in the self-testing statement, we assume that the employer strategy is pure and PVM, then we can remove both of the assumptions uh, simultaneously. Yes, and similarly in the B part, uh, if we assume the pure and the full rankness about the employer strategy, then similarly, we can just uh, get rid of them. Yes. It, which means you automatically get uh, an assumption free self-test. Yes. And I'd like to make a few remarks about this theorem. First of all, uh, the robustness is preserved in this result, uh, which means if you start with a self-test with, uh, sorry, you start with a robust self-test with certain assumptions, then you will get an, a robust assumption-free self-test. Yes, that's it. And also our result holds for a self-test from bell inequalities and extreme correlations. This is, uh, this is also uh, quite common in the, in the literature that the self-tests are from some uh, certain bell inequality or from correlation, for example, from Harley's correlation. And our result also holds uh, in the two cases. And for, but for correlations, uh, it is it's required that this correlation itself is, is extreme. Yes. And uh, for the sake of time, I won't get uh, to the detail of the proof of our theorem, but I would like to say that uh, in its proof, we uh, rely heavily on the restriction and Neymar dilation of strategies, which are can canonical ways to give us a full rank and uh, projective strategies respectively. And those tools we believe could be of independent interest uh, beyond uh, the regime of self-test. Uh, okay, so uh, for the limit of self-test, uh, theorem C is uh, short as well. It basically says if G is an assumption-free self-test, then S must be projective on this sorry on this support. On the other hand, on on other words, uh, sorry, in other words. Uh, if S is uh, full rank but non-projective, then it cannot be self-tested in an assumption-free way. Yes. So I, I, we believe that uh, uh, this is not known previously. So basically, the, the message behind this is that we can really self-test uh, non-projective measurement in assumption-free manner. And finally, uh, we found a very interesting correlation without any full rank PVM realization. Uh, just remember, uh, Given an arbitrary strategy, we can always restrict or truncate it to its support to get a full rank one, or we can use Nymark dilation to get a projective strategy. But can we do both of them simultaneously? Or for every correlation P, is, uh, does it admit a full rank and projective realization? Uh, many people might uh, conjecture yes, but the answer turns out not to be the case. So, uh, so we're, we're going to start with this, the canonical CHS strategy, which consists of this EPR pair between Ellis and Bob and poly measurement uh, X and Z for S and uh, two uh, configurations for Bob's measurement operator, which is basically X and Z, uh, but shifted. Yes, so now let's consider the following three outcome, but non-POVM uh, measurement living in the two-dimensional Hilbert space. And here are two equivalent uh, definition for those measurement operators, uh, from the left, we can see that they add up to identity. From the right, um, they are just uh, sub-normalized uh, rank one projectors uh, onto the vectors uh, evenly distributed in the Hilbert space. So uh, it is a valid POVM. And what we show that if we add this new non-projective non measurement into Bob's set, then we get a correlation from the correlation set two, three, two, three, because in this case, uh, we will have a third question for Bob and on which he will potentially give three different answers, right? So note that this P cannot be an assumption free self-test because of our theorem C, because it has this M, this non-projective one. Okay, and what is interesting is that this P first itself is a, an extreme point in this uh, quantum set of correlation, uh, but 
Surprisingly, it could be a self-test if we make a proper assumptions about self-tests, right? Uh, and from that, we can show that P admits no full rank PVM realization. And as I said, it is not, its existence is not known before. And uh, what it could also imp imply is that uh, in our theorem B, this condition of SB nice is very crucial. Recall that uh, in our theorem B, all those results rely on the fact that this I is, this S is nice. And here uh, in our last theorem, we show that when S is not nice, uh, A and B could fail. So this condition of S being nice is really important. Okay. Uh, I think it's time to wrap up. So, uh, so uh, theorem A in short is that existing definitions, it's uh, equivalence in natural settings, which is uh, basically good news. And theorem B says if uh, S is nice, then we may simply remove assumptions in self-testing, which corresponds to most of the case in the literature. So it's uh, again, uh, basically good news. Uh, theorem in C in short, uh, warns us that uh, if you are, if our canonical strategy is not nice, then we can never get assumption-free self-test, or the best we can hope for is uh, self-test with certain assumptions. Finally, in uh, theorem D, we found a very interesting correlation that admits uh, no nice realization. So that should be the end of the talk. Thanks for listening. Time for questions. Just come up to the. So maybe you have mentioned, but what's what's the definition of nice? Yes. Uh, so nice means that this uh, yes here. So this S has to be pure and full rank and project. It has all the nice strategy that we want, which is kind of uh, natural and fits basically uh, most of the existing self-testing results. Okay, and then I have another question is that in your these two results, you need pew plus something. Yes, this is. How about it just pew without the other? You ah, yes, yes. So uh, in this case, it's, it is uh, just uh, uh, automatically true because uh, if here, if we here we just uh, make the purity assumption, for example, without this PVM one, then then it is uh, already stronger than than, than this, this part A. Yeah. Right? Because it makes fewer assumptions. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So then, then then of course part A applies as well. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for your question. Go ahead. Thank you for the nice uh, talk and thanks. um it's good to see those assumptions being discussed. And just one question. Do you actually have uh, examples of uh, works that do self-test under do of those types? Like um, MyOCIO, for instance? Is it a full self-test or is it not? Uh, sorry, I, I get it. Uh, I was asking for uh, examples where uh, certain assumptions are made. For yes, like do you have some examples? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, basically, uh, most of the existing works on self testing uh, more or less have certain assumptions uh, about its employed strategies. And to avoid stepping anyone's toes, I, I would like to uh, give a example quite a long ago for example if you look at uh, papers from about 1980s uh, which is about uh, which uh, state violates uh, uh, bell inequality maximally i think that's the title and actually in in their work they assume for example the purity of the of the strategy for they only consider what pure state violates uh, uh, bell inequality maximally so in that case they really assume this purity Hi. Um, so uh, my question is about like the last theorem, theorem D on the last slide. Uh, I, I guess I'm just not really sure like what 
I should interpret like the this implications one? of the yeah theorem D here. Yes. Like, what should I like interpret the imp like implications of this theorem being like? Ah yes yes. So uh, the reason why we put it uh, here as a part of our main result is that um, we have actually already seen that in the literature um, some people conjecture that any correlation has a pure full rank PVM realization. Yes, so this is why we want to point out here that uh, actually this is not the case. We have already spot a counterexample for that. Oh, great, thanks. Thanks. Any further questions? Okay, um, so let's thank all the speakers from the session and. Thanks.